Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's April 5th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks on the move within the world of waste, gas, and energy worth shouting out. As of April 5th, 2024, Opal Fuels Incorporated stock is currently trading at $4.90. Forum Energy Technologies is at $20.30. Brookfield Renewable Core is currently trading at a value of $24.00. Black Hills Core is at a value of $53.73, and Nextera Energy is currently up to a value of $64.19 per share. But up first in the news, the UK-based Project Finance Exchange, or PFX, is reminding people that public and private sector renewable energy projects can now directly access an investment pool of over $600 billion dollars three years into its long-term mission of consolidating the fragmented multi-trillion dollar global project finance market, PFX is now under pressure from its registered investors to provide more energy transition projects with deal values from $100 million to $5 billion worldwide. Investor interest seems to be highest in utility-scale waste energy projects, hydro, solar, biofuel, and nuclear. PFX CEO Richard Osman even said, quote, There is often confusion among business leaders and policymakers between financing the development of new renewable energy technologies and the projects that bring those technologies on stream. Using today's project finance structure, there is abundant capital available to bring viable projects using proven technologies, including waste to energy, solar, and biofuel on stream, end quote. And speaking of money going toward renewable energy projects, the coalition known as Power Forward Communities has been awarded $2 billion by the EPA to help decarbonize U.S. homes. The Power Forward Communities is a group made up of Enterprise Community Partners, Rewiring America, Habitat for Humanity International, the Local Initiative Support Corporation, and United Way Worldwide. They joined together with the purpose to transform the housing sector, which would save homeowners and renters money, invest in stronger communities, and help meet national climate goals. The $2 billion seven-year National Clean Investment Fund grant from the EPA is to provide capital for affordable residential decarbonization throughout the country with a specific focus on low-income and disadvantaged communities. But it's not just the UK and the EPA. The US Department of Energy is getting in on the action as well. This past week, the DOE announced $45.8 million in new funding for projects that will advance research, development, demonstration, and deployment critical to achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions in the transportation sector. The funding is meant to drive innovation in equitable clean energy transportation and is aligned with strategies detailed in the U.S. National Blueprint for Transportation Decarbonization. Applicants must submit a concept paper no later than May 2, 2024, with full applications due June 24th. And since we just touched on it, yes, the Department of Energy has officially released their first ever federal blueprint to decarbonize America's building sector. The Biden-Harris administration this past week released what they're calling Decarbonizing the U.S. Economy by 2050, a national blueprint for the buildings sector. A comprehensive plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from buildings by 65% by 2035 and 90% by 2050. The U.S. DOE led the Blueprint's development in collaboration with the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Environmental Protection Agency, and other federal agencies. The Blueprint is the first sector-wide strategy for building decarbonization developed by the federal government. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com, that's diamondsci.com, or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news.
And up next, a recent study by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory explored how the total cost of driving for zero emission and diesel medium to heavy duty vehicles could evolve over time under different scenarios from present day to 2050. One of the biggest takeaways from the new study is, quote, with continued improvements in vehicles and fuels, zero emissions vehicles are rapidly becoming commercially viable, potentially reaching total cost of driving parity or better compared to diesel vehicles by 2035 in all market segments, end quote. The study concludes a full transition to zero emissions vehicle sales by 2035 would result in a 65% reduction in emissions by 2050 compared to 2019. To put that in perspective, medium and heavy duty vehicles, although they only account for 5% of vehicles on the road, currently make up 21% of transportation related greenhouse gas emissions. And up next, according to Clean Technica, world electric vehicle sales now comprise 13% of all auto sales across the planet. Global plug-in vehicle registrations were up 3% in February 2024 compared to the previous year with 830,000 registrations. This makes it, according to them at least, possibly the last month with fewer than 1 million sales per month ever for plug-in electric vehicles. Battery electric vehicles were down 6% year over year, however they largely attribute this to the Chinese New Year's impact on the vehicle sales market. And up next, Carbon Future is partnering with Octavia on monitoring, reporting, and verification for direct air capture. Carbon Future, the leading trust infrastructure for durable carbon removal, is introducing the world's first independent digital monitoring, reporting, and verification system designed for direct air capture at Octavia Carbon's Project Hummingbird storage facility in Kenya's Rift Valley. The carbon dioxide removal leader will deploy its tracking system via IoT technology at Octavia's facility, improving the quality and efficiency of data collecting and reporting. This announcement comes just a month after Carbon Future announced a similar collaboration with German-based Pyreg and Austrian-based Syncraft Unite, two CDR facility manufacturers specializing in biomass for removal. And up next, in California, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, Southern California Gas Company, and the technology firm Electrikea have partnered on a plan to add grid-scale storage in the form of synthetic natural gas. Now, very briefly, while spikes in power usage have led to power outages in recent summers, instances of too much renewable power have also put a strain on the power grid. Such scenarios force grid operators to curtail renewable generation to avoid damaging the grid. This has caused a loss of more than 1.5 million megawatt hours of renewable electricity in 2020 alone, effectively throwing away enough energy to power 100,000 homes for a year just because the grid lacks suitable storage mechanisms to hold onto surplus energy for later use. However, by converting excess renewable energy into renewable natural gas, the fuel can then be transported through existing natural gas infrastructure or stored indefinitely as needed. And lastly, in Indian River County, Florida, the county now stands to earn more than $400,000 a year selling gas from its landfill to a company that will process it into renewable natural gas for consumers and clean air vehicles. Under a new 20-year agreement with the county, Nopetro Renewables will invest $40 million to build a compound they are calling the Vero Beach Nopetro Eco District near the landfill, expected to be completed by early 2025. Nopetro will then buy the landfill gas, convert it into RNG, and sell it to Florida City Gas, a utility company, to distribute through its pipeline network. It's estimated it will provide up to 80% of the natural gas used by Indian River County customers. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for April 5th, 2024, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.